right, guys, here's color chart three. Um, now, color chart three is all about value of color. Remember, value is all about the darkness and lightness of something. Um, now, I filled in this first part up here uh, just to show you what it's about because every year my students get really confused about this, okay? Um, so when you're filling in this part up here, you have a couple options. Um, you start with white and yellow, and then you could do this top line here, yellow, green, green, blue, green, blue, blue, violet, and then violet and black. Or if you'd rather deal with the warmer colors, you can do this bottom line right here. Yellow, orange, orange, red, orange, red, and red, violet. Um, I just went with the top line because it's on top, okay? Um, and I invite you to do the exact same thing because you just go straight across there. But if you really like the warm colors, you can do that second line instead. So you do white, yellow, and then skip down here and do all these colors and then go back up to violet and black. Okay, whatever makes most sense to you. If that's confusing, just ask me and I'll explain again. Um, now, the purpose of this chart is for us to think about color and their values. Um, so up here, as you can see, um, we started with white. And, um, and white and black, like, obviously, we, we understand those values by themselves. It's very easy. White means something's very light, and black is always very dark. But colors themselves have their own sense of value, and this little scale here is going to show us that, okay? Um, so the value of yellow is obviously very different from the value of violet. Um, violet is practically black, so violet has its own value, and it's very, very dark. Um, yellow and yellow-green have their own values also, and they are very, very light. And then we have these guys in the middle, which are a little more neutral. Um, not neutral, but just in the middle, kind of like a... Um, like a medium, basically, of like light, medium, and then dark. Um, and then we get more and more dark as we go over here. If we do the same thing with these colors here, you'll find that yellow, orange, and or like yellow, orange is still very light. And then orange and red and, um, and red, orange over here are kind of like in the middle. And then as we get to red, violet, it starts to get darker and darker. Okay. Now, this is going to help you when you're choosing your colors for um, your project in the future. Because you're going you're gonna to have to figure out the value of your color um, and how many tints and shades of that color you're going to need. And speaking of tints and shades, um, that's what we're going to work on over here. We're going to take one color. We're going to start with blue, and we're going to do all the tints of it and all the shades of it. Now, if we look at our scale up here, it shows you that blue is a little bit more on the darker side of the value scale. It's, a, it's considered a little bit more dark. So what that means is that blue, since blue is already kind of dark, it's going to have more sh uh, tints um, than it will have shades because as you're going to see, blue will turn to black really quickly because it's already really dark. Um, so we're going to start with the tints first. And all I have here is um, my palette, and I have blue, and I have um, white, and I have black. So I'm going to make some tints with the white first. And um, remember that when we're mixing two colors, I always like to start with the lighter color first because um, it's more easily changeable. Um, so I have this nice little circle full of white, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a tiny dab of blue and see if that changes, see if I get a nice little tint out of it. Now, it might be hard to see on the projector, but I actually did get a little bit of a tint out of it. And you know what? I'm just going to add another extra little bit so that you could see on the projector because I'm guessing it's kind of hard to see. It probably just still looks mostly white. I can tell you in person it doesn't, but I'd rather you see. So I'm just going to add another extra little dab and hopefully you can kind of see how it changed now and hopefully you'll see it on the paper. Hopefully, hopefully. Now, um, right here, I've already filled it in with white. And hopefully now you can see a little bit of a change. Oh, it's still not showing up that much, but that's okay. Uh, just going to have to believe me on that one, okay? Now, next one. I'm just going to keep adding more dabs of blue as I go across so that I get to blue here. And I can see like a subtle change from white all the way to blue. So I'll go with a bigger dab this time. Okay. That changed pretty nicely. Oops. Okay. And my color. You know what? I'm not happy with that. Because I know it's not going to show up on the screen. 
so I'm going to do it again. Okay. Experiencing what I'm experiencing, which the color's not changing that much, is probably because I have just way too much white in that little circle. So I'm going to take some off to the side. You start with a big pool of color and you add little dabs to it. Keep going and going, and then it'll take forever for you to see the changes. So we're going to start out with less paint, and I think that's a valuable lesson right now. So maybe you guys should do the same thing. Start out with less paint, less is more. That was a pretty good change. There we go. Okay. Third time trying this square. But that's okay. I needed to check and see how that was going. Okay. And there we go. Now we see a better change from here to here. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to go again. That was a good change. Eh, still not enough for me though. I really want to see the, the difference between the two of them. So I think I need to be more liberal with my blue when I'm adding it. There we go. That's better. Check with your eye. Check, make sure you're doing this right. Okay, now for the next one, I know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take some of this because I have so much paint here, it's going to take me a bunch of blue to change it again. I'm just going to take some over to the side like that. Alright, and take a nice amount of blue. And I think this time you'll really see the change quickly. There you go. There we go, and that's a nice change. I think I got a little overzealous when I was first pouring out my white. I had a lot of white in there, and it took forever to get it to change um, <clears throat> because there was just so much of it. So I think you guys should start out with a little bit less um, when you're doing yours. Now I'll move on to my shades of blue. Okay, since I'm almost done with this part, I'm not going to worry about contaminating my blue paint. I'm just going to take, um, I'm just going to make my shades right in there. Now, um, when I'm, again, I'm Mixing two colors, I start with my lighter color first. Black is the darkest color I could get, um, so that means I'm going to start with my blue. So I'm going to take a little bit black and move it into the blue. And it's probably going to be also hard to see on the projector, but this will change very quickly because black is just so strong. I mean, yeah, it looks like it even turned black right now, but it didn't. It's just a shade of blue. And last one. Be careful with the black. Just a little dab at a time will do it. Okay. And even that looks like it's practically black, but it's just another shade of blue. Really, really, really dark shade of blue. Oh my god, I could barely see the blue anymore, but it's still a teeny tiny bit in there. Okay. There we go. Now we have our nice scale of white all the way to black, focusing on blue with the tints of blue and the shades of blue. Now I'll work on the bottom part for you. Um, so, this bottom part. Alright guys, so um, the bottom part now is a little more tricky. Um, yellow is probably the trickiest color to deal with because it reflects so much light back into our eyes that 
um, it's very, very light in a, it's, uh, as you can see, it's like practically white um, because it's right next to white. It's it's the has the lightest value. Again, it shines so much light back in our eyes. It's it's just it's just pure light basically. Um, now, yellow is going to be a little different from blue because as you can see, it's lighter. Therefore, since it's a lighter color, you can create more shades with it. Blue was already very dark. So you couldn't make, I mean, it went from blue to black so quickly. Um, yellow, we can work with a little bit more. We create more shades. And you'll see the, the tints of yellow are going to be really, really light. Now, this is actually a doled down yellow, just so you could see it a little better. Um, I just had some yellow, and I added a little bit of purple to it because that's the quickest way to dull something down. Um, I'm going to start with the tints. Uh, two colors. Here we go. We're going to be adding white and yellow together to create tints. And I always start with my lightest color, which of course is the white. And this time I put less white in the little circle. Um, Cause last time it just took forever to get that white to change. So I'm going to start with a dab of this and see if we can get it to change, which we did. Okay. Now it's a really light yellow. Okay. I'll add another like chunk of yellow in there. 